See, so if you get out of all that shit, including the ego battle, I can run faster than you. If a kid says that to you, you say, that's right. What's your problem? <laughs> so what? But kids argue about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, and they get in because they pick it up. That's what a baseball game is. A fully grown human being running through the field with a ball and saying, isn't this amazing that it attracts that many people? But sports is insane. It's designed to occupy the time of humans who might begin to ask questions. Ball games, football, baseball, basketball, all ball games, bowling was designed as religion was designed. So that people, when they had a day off, they used to sit around and say, how come the king has 42 rooms, a thousand wives, and all I've got is a stale loaf of bread? So they arranged battles and scenes for people to go to. Then they had the church on their day off. And then they arranged community singing and dancing to fill in time off. That's what all these dances are about. The rock concerts would take all the young kids and move them across the town from one place to another. It is a nothing thing, dancing. you got to think about it. What is that shit? It's nothing at all. You understand? Now, if a man came from Mars and, and, and he saw a lot of people moving around like that, look at that. <laughs> and he said, What is that? And you say, Well, that's dancing. Yes, but what is it? Does it improve the kidney function or anything? No? Well, I don't understand it. You understand? It's a nothing thing, like religion. It's a nothing thing. Okay? Now, in society, the society you live in is full of nothing things and nothing words. There are a lot of words that have absolutely no meaning. That's why semantics is very necessary. Semantics deals with the meaning of words as people use them. People use words and they draw different inferences from words than the way you use it. If I say, I would like to see a world in which everyone lived together in peace and worked constructively, the person gives up, you'll never see that happen in, in a thousand lifetimes. You would assume, if you were a scientist, that the person had just studied all human systems and found that that cannot be arranged. But it's not true. It's just a, a worthless opinion. Okay? Now, it's possible for man to do almost anything. And so, before I got into the subject of space colonization, I wanted you to know that the approach was a little different than your habits of thought. So it seems to me that if we want to do any undersea exploration, you're interested in undersea photography up to a point, right? You know you can run by sonar devices, mechanisms under the ocean, crawl along, pick up core samples without putting a person in the equipment. Is that all right? And you know you can put stereo cameras on there, good lighting, and all kinds of underwater sonic transmitters and thermographs. And you don't need a guy in the apparatus. Okay. When you put a unit out in space and you want to purify or you want to make metals, that do not sink to the bottom of the tank. There's no flotation. You want to make pure, pure metals. You want to make, develop a new metal or chemical technology or electronic technology in space, free of gravity, and a relatively sterile environment. You can do a lot of fantastic work in chemistry, genetics, engineering, materials. Is that right? Okay. So what you do is you build a space station on Earth, the same as the one out there. And you put humans in it, and they manipulate all of the duplicating devices, you know what I mean? And that moves them up there. By putting people out there, off the sea floor, there's no need to. You see? Now, if you want to go and fly through space and stop there and just get the feeling of it, that's something else. But there's no need for it. There's no need to put a guy in an ICBM, you know what I mean? And launch him at Russia. I don't see any need for aircraft carriers at all. With the new tidal wave generators, they generate a tidal wave of a thousand feet. What good is an aircraft carrier, a submarine? This is in the old days, meaning 10 years ago, they can produce a thousand foot tidal wave with an H bomb. So, what, what is your fleet for? Apparently, the Bureau of Naval Operations are either comprised of extremely stupid people, there's a lot of contracts in it for people. But it makes no sense to me. Now, I'll tell you something else you didn't know about. About uh, 25 years ago, I don't know how old you are, but we used to have the Ground Observation Corps. Did you ever hear those words? They were good citizens, probably American Legion and other stuff. They used to stand out on a corner with their hats and look for enemy aircraft. They'd stand at the sea. And in those days, they only did 700 miles an hour. You know what I mean? So by the time you spotted an enemy aircraft and went to give the alert, you'd be gone. What the hell's the ground observation for? And they were selling 
little shelters you put on the ground of concrete, and you went in there during a nuclear raid, and the heat... Where do you come out? Where do you go? No, you never come out because the heat from your body, the heat of the bomb, will cause a moisture in your body to blow you to smithereens. I mean, these things are all done by insane people. What I want to say to you again, the Bureau of Naval Operations, the CIA, the FBI are comprised of extremely stupid people. They're generating this time. Their viewpoint is constricted to this time. Therefore, if you turn to a congressman or a politician, you're bound to get a lot of hot air because there isn't any information in their language. So, like I said many times before, we have enough bombs to destroy the Earth many times, so the armament system is just good business okay. for now, short term. I understand what you're talking about, but the way I was thinking about space colonies or going into space was uh, you talk about uh, in the future a brotherhood of the whole world you know, together yes. so that there'd be no war and there'd be peace. But as I see it today, the only way it's going to happen is if there's some radical change, you know, so Many evolution. radical changes. Okay. Yeah. Is it, do you consider it possible that there could be a slow evolution towards it? Because right now there's uh, OTLAG, it's a German corporation yeah. that runs out of Zaire. They do a lot of rocket launching, and then the Japanese have contracted one full space shuttle in 1993. Yeah. So, how about the United, all the you know, world powers or all the countries getting together and designing one, and that would almost tie it together? You know, it would be a world thing, and they'd see they could work oh, together. Oh, those are good trends. I agree with you. Okay. At they the present day, are useful trends. Start it. Start yeah. up in space. And then in space, you talk about also um, your self-sufficient cities, where everything in the city is built around it, you know, all the food processing, we're yes. growing, yes. high yes. and all that. Yes. Well, how about a space kind of, you know, 10,000 people that proves that it can be done, that one thing that only occupies, you know, a couple, you know, billion you know, cubic feet, cubic guard guards. Oh, you know, it, it, it can be done. You don't need the but, people up but there. But the people don't understand that on Earth right now. They say, oh, it can't be done. No, it's impossible. Yeah, but that isn't the technology problem, because technology says, what do you want? You want a nuclear weapon? And they make it. Mm -hmm. What do you want? You want an automated mechanism that photographs Venus or Saturn? We'll make it. If you give them the money to do it, they'll get it. Now, whether or not there ought to be a man on Mars or the moon, that's another question. Uh, the use value of it is, is the question. Well, what use is it? Okay, well... The use I see is that it would, you know, draw public opinion towards oh, that. Oh, you think then the world might be operated a great deal by public opinion. You've got to remember that most of your newspapers are controlled. Now, the President of the United States really doesn't make any decisions. Neither does the CIA. A lot of people don't know this. They think, oh, the CIA does this or that. There's a group, and that is, uh, we call them the unholy three, the banks, mass heavy industry, the church. There's a group that really controls the United States. They have, they make the policies. They determine what ought to be done to serve their established order of things. They want to keep things this way. In order to keep things this way, you get up and you tell children, you know, you say to them, what's the greatest country in the world? So I don't know. And you proceed to tell them your country is the greatest country in the world. When I worked for an aircraft company years ago, we used to sing a solo about Douglas Aircraft. We worked for Douglas, and we're proud of it. We had the Douglas bowling team. It was a Lockheed bowling team. You know what I mean? Whereas you're interested in science, you, you don't wave a flag. I, when I go to auto races, I'm interested in any car that comes in. Do you know what I mean? When I go to air races, if it's Japanese planes or German planes, I'm interested in the technology. Not God damn it, I hope an American comes in. Some sort of idiot right. thinks that way. All right, if you can understand what I'm talking about, it means that we're interested in technology as a service. To serve, here's what technology means to me. Technology is extensional devices. Now, there was a, a gadget we used to have as kids. I don't know if it still exists. Richard, you ever run into one of these? They had a handle on this end, a handle on that end, and two prongs at the other end. You can grab something far away, you squeeze it, and it goes forward. Did you ever see that gadget, yeah. John? That was called, in the early days, you never saw it? Yeah. Sure. Extensional device. You can extend. The telephone is that. You can call a friend 20 miles away, find out if he's home. The telephone is an extension of human systems. Therefore, if anyone says we have too much technology, give them the old Victrola where they have to wind it up, you know, and the needles skipping over, scratching the records. There's no such thing as too much technology. There is such a thing as negative aspects of technology where we don't plan to harness the waste or utilize it, we dump it into the rivers. That's not technology. 
That's stupidity. So if people start turning against technology, you have a disaster ahead. What people have to learn to do is learn how to, how to understand what it is that forces technology in such a preponderantly stupid